let's bring in the back view go for the web page click on the back view right click and choose save image as put it in the same folder as the other images in SOLIDWORKS make a, a sketch to put the image on and to rotate in uh, SOLIDWORKS click on an object with middle mouse and then you could tumble around that point okay so in this case I will use this pre-made plane here uh, so the right plane here is the plane I will use for a sketch so I choose sketch look at the corner we're inside the sketch so let's go flat normal two. and now we could move in this image uh, you know that you find the sketch picture under tools sketch tools and then all the way down sketch picture you go for the back view choose open and it will bring in quite big in image here again and scale it down and position it smaller maybe we could go inside view here try to get it approximately right right size here something like that and go flat normal to space bar normal to okay I think that is good enough so I'm just looking at the symmetry here and just looking at the line in the top here and down here oh maybe it's a little bit too small let's scale it down a little bit so it should fit better okay again we don't need to be super precise here but we could do a little bit better okay Think we got it remember uh, a little bit of transparency is nice so go for transparency full image and a little bit of transparency there on the slider except accept this sketch as well so and if you, you just lose your thing here so just go for zoom to fit you could also use f key as a shortcut Try to find a dot or something, and then you have, then you have kind of set your tumble point. So you click once, and you see that symbol that you can rotate around. Okay, this looks good. So let us now do a sketch here, one in the middle approximately, and one in the front, which will be. To start for a loft when working in SOLIDWORKS and tumbling in space it could rotate in a, a peculiar way so if you zoom in and carefully right middle click I mean on an object then you could rotate around that object instead now we would like to make a spline here that follows the sketch that we just put in so I will on the same right plane again make a sketch and I go for a spline and I would like to have the spline going exactly from that point and about there and back exactly to that spot and we have a point there that is 
exactly on the sketch there. So that works nicely. I go for the spline, force that, <coughs> that one to be horizontal and that arrow to be horizontal. And now I go flat, so it's easy to adjust towards the image. So now you can try to find position for this one, bring down the power a little bit. You can turn on the curvature plot to get an idea uh, how, of what is happening here. So when I move this around, you can see also the curvature plot is changing. So you could try to have, if possible, a smooth change here of the curvature plot. Could be tricky. Okay, I turn off the curvature plot by clicking on the spline, unmark show curvature, accept, and accept that sketch. And if it rotates funny, click on an object and then you could rotate around that object or entity. Let's rename this and uh, let's call it uh, back profile. So this, this will be one of the sketches for a loft. So let's make another here. And we need to have a plane that goes straight through that point. So I go for right plane and do my favorite control drag. And then I can just zoom in and click on that dot and it adjusts, this, adjusts itself exactly to that point. So that's perfect. Accept that plane. And if you like, you could rename the plane. And we will have a sketch on that. And we're inside a sketch. In this case, not going flat. Uh, let's click on that one. Position this somewhere in space. And then I will go back choose that point and escape. Now I go flat and now I will try to find a similar shape to the one in the back. Uh, we will have these horizontal of course and the same with the top. So I force it to be horizontal and we can also turn on the curvature plot here so when we work with this blind we can see if it misbehaves okay i'm happy with that turn off the curvature go out from this sketch and now we have two sketches there and we also have some curves here so we could try to loft this one now uh, but if we would like it to be extra wide here then we actually need a third sketch so let's add a third one uh, and by the way let's rename so let's call this front profile so let's make a middle uh, profile again we need uh, a plane this front plane here we could hide it goodbye I go for right plane and control drag it now we just need to decide for a position where it should be widest so that's the question let's go for 100 yeah why not so that that looks Maybe a little bit closer here. So we go for 80 millimeters. See. Yeah. Something like that. 90 millimeter. For me, it looks good. So here, plane 2. I could rename this to middle plane. 
on that middle plane I will make a sketch. Now we don't have any dot to connect to. So now we need to do it a little bit differently. We will just throw out the spline approximately in, in space. And then we will use the command pierce. Because this curve here goes straight into the sketch somewhere. So if I click that one, and then I click on the spline that is on top our on our new sketch, or actually I would like to have that dot, that point, end point. Then I could choose peers, which means it will find the position where it peers through the sketch and it happens to be there. Okay, so let's do the same thing down here. So that point should be in the same location as where this line shift click pierces through somewhere down there okay so I choose pierce and it found the location perfect so now we could go in a flat direction and make this the widest uh, of these profiles force this one to be flat and we could take the opportunity to make it weaker and this is too far out. Let's move that in a little bit. Go down here. Force this one to be flat, horizontal. And we could, of course, turn on the curvature plot here again. Let's choose the spline, turn on curvature. We could bring down the scale here. And then we could move this point here. So it follows approximately. Maybe this is a ah, hey, we'll let it be like that. If you like, we could we could adjust this later on as well. Okay, let me rotate around a spot here. So there we go. I got the symbol, rotation symbol. Okay, uh, I forgot to turn off curvature plot there so that's a little bit irritating I think I will go into the sketch here and, and turn off that uh, curvature plot uh, so let us right click and choose edit sketch we are already in the sketch so yes just go for the spine and now we can go out from the sketch great uh, the middle plane here I will hide it because it's a little bit irritating and now these sketches are also a little bit irritating so I think I will I will hide the mother sketch I will hide the back view as well um, that was a terrible idea and uh, let's bring back uh, the mother sketch because I, I would like to use that guide there so hopefully these splines are now touching that curve in the top and in the bottom. So let's see if we could use the loft command. And now we're talking surface loft. So remember that you could find something very similar under solid feature loft. But this is not the one you should go for. So instead we find here lofted surface and you can see on the icon that this is a, a thin surface okay click on that one it asks for profile in the blue window so i click that one that one and that one and it gives us a preview here of a surface before we accept this we should secure that this edge and the edge underneath here goes straight in uh, in the symmetry plane and you do that with start and constraints so we go for normal to profile let's have a look if it changes a little bit yeah it did and here we also have a possibility to go normal to profile and it also changed a little bit 
when you're doing plastic parts you could also see something interesting here here we have a, a possibility to instead of going in normal direction we could add uh, for instance one or two degree angle so it's not absolutely flat in this case here I will I will just let it be like this but this is good to know about that you actually could change the angle okay great we accept that surface now we have a surface there oh I just realized that I did uh, a big mistake here I thought I was working on the symmetry plane but actually I was working on these sketches here therefore I got this interesting behavior actually it looks pretty cool but I will go back here and edit this loft command here so I will release this from being normal to profile and let it be free but I will add guide curves so this curve here that exists on the mother sketch I bring it in and I will also like to have the one down here let's see if we can find it should be that one and accept so now we have added in that one as well okay then we could choose to have it normal to these guide curves and that should force the surface to be absolutely flat along the guide curve so when we make a mirror it should look like look good except okay so the first surface is made and it looks really good so let's do the surface down here in a similar approach so in this case I will make a sketch here and because this is absolutely flat here I think we could just extrude here instead of doing loft um, so let's continue to do surface here so I will do a profile from there to there I need a sketch right there and if you remember I have said that it's really easy to make a plane if you have a line and here we have a line so we will use this center line when we click plane I click the line then I click the end of the line and it understands that it should be normal to accept that one so on top of this plane number three that is still active I make a sketch so now we're inside a sketch here so I will just make like a elliptic shape here so if I go for elliptic and click there click there and then I can just make a shape here that I think is good let's move in the center line from there to there and now we should be able to trim that's better so now we have a half ellipse there and if you like we could dimension this towards the center line and go on the other side of the center line so if you're on this side it will be like the radius but this is elliptic so I go for that side and that will be the complete thickness of the handle so choose a value and let's just extrude this one along here so I go for surface extrude surface and uh, the sketch is already picked so I click this one it gives us a preview instantly so we could just take this arrow and change it but that didn't work let's go for the control panel and just add a little bit of length there and maybe we could choose up to a certain length there which makes a connection to the mother sketch so if I choose up to vertex instead of a length then I should be able to click on a dot there now it adjusts the length towards 
the mother sketch. Good. I accept with a right click and we jump out from the sketch. Uh, let's hide this plane here. So I say hide. And now we start to have something pretty nice there. What I would like to do now is I would like to cut up a piece here so we could connect uh, from this to the upper surface. So what I will do now is uh, a sketch which have this elliptic feeling. Maybe it will be a spline that we, we do from, from here to there. So we need uh, a sketch plane again. And maybe we could borrow this direction of this sketch plane. So if I just control drag this one and move it in inside here, I went a little bit too far. So let's try 200 millimeter, 190. So we are inside. Uh, this upper body. Let's do a sketch. Many sketches. Look at the corner. We are in a sketch. So let's go flat. So we zoom in here. And let me do it one more time. So it flips another direction. So we like to see the handle. And that did not make it better. One more time. Okay really difficult to see the handle here it's actually impossible so let's tumble in space and there then we can see this one okay so let's be in an angle then so I would like to do something similar here and go for an elliptic shape so if I go for the center here something like that and then I move this one out and I move the center point so I'm trying to get a shape here to cut with in the upper piece that's the idea something like that but let's go flat because this is really difficult in an angle so here we first of all we can straighten this up so if I click that one and that one and just tell them to be horizontal uh, and the middle point should be on the same height as the zero zero point uh, we could use uh, really use a center line here so these kind of occasions uh, a center line could be really good so let's just connect somewhere on the mother sketch there Remember, whatever you click on, you make a relationship to that. So if I shift click the center line and this dot, you can make them coincident. Uh, we don't need the, the lower part here, so I'll go for trimming here. Goodbye. Okay, the idea here is to, to push this onto the main surface here and just make a big gap where we could connect a transition surface. Insert, and now we would like to make a curve. So we go for curve and split line. It senses this sketch here, and it will project it in the normal direction. So that's great. So what we need to do now is pick the surfaces or faces that will be cut. So I choose this one. Uh, which is already blue marked and add in that surface there that face and we just would like it to go in one direction so here you can actually choose one or two directions and we can see that is the wrong direction I flip it so it just makes a split here okay accept oh, look at that perfect so now we have cut this surface up in two pieces uh, but there is nothing happening here, so that, that is no damage done there. 
So that, that's the reason why I position it in the middle there. Okay, so this surface here could really be suppressed or deleted or hidden. So if I right click on this one, and here we have the delete, but it's the feature. So that's not right. There is another delete somewhere. So if I go even further down, there is a double arrow. So if I click that double arrow, we get face delete visible. So face delete means that we should be able to get rid of that one. We could see that the selection jumped in here and we would like to delete, not delete and patch, uh, which by the, way, by the way is a nice repair tool. Uh, so if you have an ugly patch, you can delete it and repatch it. Delete and let it be deleted. Okay, good. So now we have a hole here. Now we could actually try to jump from there to there in one go. But uh, I will like to show that we, it sometimes could be a good idea to cut this up in two pieces. So I will make a sketch here that will split this completely. So yet another sketch. So go for the front plane, which is really huge here. And make a sketch on that one. So look at the corner. So normal two. And it flips. So if you don't like that, we can flip again. And now we'll just use the mother sketch here to follow this center line here. So that's the only thing that I will do in this sketch here. And I go out from that. We could name this sketch so we remember what it is. So we'll call it split line sketch. Okay, so let's do a split here. And we go for insert under curve, you have split line. So takes that one, it asks for the surfaces, that one and that one I would like to have cut and it could go in whatever direction it likes. And now we have four different pieces here. So the reason I did this is that we could connect from that point to that point with the spline very easily now. So it's time to do some splines here in 3D and um, we could for the moment we could hide the uh, the mother sketch wherever it is where are you oh it's hidden down here let's hide that one and I will hide that plane a little bit. And now we will just jump from one point to another in space. Here, this is absolutely flat here. So from there to there, we could just, on a normal sketch, we could make a spline. Um, but we could also see that you could do this in 3D without any sketch. Um, so let's try a new thing. It, that is called 3D sketch. So that means we're not using a flat plane. We could go in whatever direction we like. 3D sketch. Look at the corner. Now we're inside a 3D sketch. I go for a spline and you can see that the cursor looks a little bit different. Click on that dot. I click on that dot and escape. So everything is like normal, but this is a 3D sketch. I choose the spline and I choose the edge with a shift click and force them to be tangent. And here you could also see that you could ask for curvature. So curvature is the next step of smoothness. But I will... It could be fun to try, but it makes it more complex. 
So for this assignment, tangent is enough. Do the same thing on the other side. Shift click and tangent. Okay, so let's do another piece on that side and we will use this new 3D sketch possibility. So I go for one dot there and another dot there. Okay, escape. I choose the edge, shift click and say tangent. And that one and that one should also be tangent. Okay, and of course we could change the power of these, but I think it looks pretty nice as it is. I will leave it for now. Let's do the last one. Yet another 3D sketch and a spline from that point to that point. Escape. Shift click. Tangent please. And the same on this side here. And this is the tricky part because here it's almost turning in the wrong direction here. So if we have made if we have made this ellipt a little bit higher up then this would not occur. So let's accept this for the moment and let's see if we could go back to the sketch that is governing uh, the elliptic shape here. So there we have it. So let's go into that sketch and pull this out a little bit. We have no dimension here, so I will, I will just move it manually. Oops, and then it made it wider in all directions. Control Z, because I actually would like that to be fixed in space. And that one fixed in space, and only work with that one. Okay, that's better. So move it up a little bit. Accept that and it should update. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, a lot better. A lot better. Of course, we could change the power of, of this spline as well. But I think that was a good idea to bring it up a little bit. So we help this transition. Okay, let's try to loft from one side to another and have these as guide curves. Uh, the direction here might be possible to, to change. So you could actually loft from this one down there and have these edges as guides. And uh, there is a little bit difference there because you have less uh, con constraint possibilities for guide curves. So therefore I will try to go for lofting in this direction. Okay, loft and surface. So I go for the profile there and the profile there. We get an instant preview. Uh, but uh, there is several things we would like to do now. First of all, we would like to have smoothness here. So before we click on these splines, we could bring in a little bit of start and end constraints here. So in this case, it's not normal to, but tangent I would like to have. And now it tries to make it smoother. Looks good. Let's do the same thing on the other side. And here you also have the possibility to change the power of, of this. But first we go for tangent in the other direction as well. Looks pretty nice. Uh, you could also change the power with the arrow here. But be careful. It could easily be that you are asking for the impossible. And then you will not get any surfaces at all. Remember that you could also go back here and, and change the value here in the panel. Okay, uh, we can see that it doesn't follow our guide curves. The question is, do we need it to follow the guide curve? Yeah, it's up to you. We could also change the power here, so so we are very close to the guide curve. Uh, so by doing that and changing that power back a little bit, that should be closer. Still not 
exactly. So in this case, maybe we would like to have the guide cards. You're not forced to have guide cards, but maybe we would like to have that. So in this case, it seems like a good idea. So we go for guide curve and click on that one. Now it follows that one. Remember, when you add guide curves, you also add to the complexity of the surface. Uh, so in this case, what happened here? Let's see. I would like to have that as a guide curve. Select the open loop. Yep. And that is what it is. It's, a, it's an open curve there. It's not a closed loop. So I have that added in. And it could be that we need to continue to tweak the power of these uh, so we get a nice continuity here. But for now, we will leave it like that. Okay. So let's do the other piece here uh, before we start to examine the re reflections. But it's, it's not terrible, but you can see that it changes a little bit there. Okay, uh, well, let's loft again. Okay, so this 3D sketch here uh, was used in that loft command. Okay, so let's do the loft here again. And I go for that edge. That edge, we get a preview. Let's force it to be tangent in both directions. And let's add in the guide curves here so let's see if I choose the right one we just would like to have the edge there and we got the edge another thing here is that we also would like it to be smooth in this direction so while the edge is selected you could go down here and force it to be tangent so now it should be smoother there it's difficult to see okay here we would like to add a guide curve as well so we have just made a brand new one so if I accept this now, we have a surface uh, that looks all right. So you should be happy with that. If, if you have a struggle doing this, surfaces here, try to change the power on both sides. And uh, if that doesn't work, try to make more space for the transitions. In this case, my, we might have gone a little bit further up, which would help the transition a little bit okay um, we have surfaces let's mirror this one so I go for features and mirror and we would like to mirror around the center plane we find it somewhere there we have it not yes there we have the front plane so we have the front plane there and the features okay features it's not a feature let's see if it's a face so I go for face yep so I go for faces here but it doesn't accept all of them so that doesn't work and features didn't work so Remember that you have a third option here, bodies. So let's try that, and that works. Yeah. Okay, we get a preview, and if you see a preview, then it's usually okay. Look at that. Let's close this up now, because now we're getting close to a solid thing. So let's just move out here and find something called a boundary surface or if you know it's flat you could go for planner and this is flat I know it's flat so if I choose those two edges I can just accept look at that so we have here again whoops I need to choose it planner that's better right click and then choose it, planner surface, and then go for this, that, here we have four pieces, 
get a preview here. That one. And the last piece. And the preview and the right click for accept. Wow, look at that. So now, to make this into a solid, there is a knitting tool. And now it starts to become really interesting to see if it works. We go for knit, and now we would like to knit all these pieces together here. So we just choose every single piece here and see if we could knit this into a solid body. So when you have blue marked everything, if there is no gaps, no holes, we could try to form solid. Remember to click here, try to form solid. And now we have a setting here for gaps. And we can see that I have already found some small tiny gaps here, but they're all, all of them are smaller than the tolerance here. So it should go well. Let's see, I accept this. A solid body. Yeah, so we have a solid body. So we have succeeded to do that. And to triple double check that you actually have a solid body, we could go for a cross section. And if it is blue, then you know it's a, it's a solid thing. Okay, there is probably things that we need to improve here. So if we examine this, for instance here, instantly see that there is some quite sharp edge here in the back here that we might need to adjust. Maybe we could adjust the loft so it goes straight into this uh, edge here. Otherwise it looks pretty alright. Super!